Okay, as promised, I want to walk you through some R commands that kind of show you how the linear regression or best fit line plotting mechanism works in R. Uh, so this is going to be relatively simple. There's not too many to work through here, but what we're going to do is start off with this uh, monomorphemic monosyllabic words database that we played around with last time. So I'll just start by loading that up into R. And I'm also going to attach the variable labels for that data frame as well, so we can use those easily. And then lastly, as a part of this preamble, I'm going to once again extract just the first five words out of this database, so you may remember these. Uh, they varied a little bit in familiarity and frequency, and that's mostly what we're going to look at um, for the time being. Uh, so what I want to do is also go back and plot for these first five data points um, the familiarity versus the frequency. Uh, in a graph that looks like this, a scatter plot, as we call it. So on the x-axis, we have the frequency of the five individual words, and on the y-axis, we have the familiarity. So in this case, um, familiarity is operating as our y variable, and then frequency is going to operate as our x variable. So this is the dependent variable plotted here, and this is the independent variable plotted down here. Uh, and I'm going to plot a best fit regression line on top of this scatter plot, so you can see what it looks like. And this is a very simple example because we only have five um, data points, uh, and they have this sort of positive relationship with one another, where bigger in terms of frequency means bigger in terms of familiar familiarity in general. So if I plot a best fit line on that, it will show you this line that kind of cuts through the middle of the noise here, as I mentioned before. Uh, but obviously it's not going to be overlaid perfectly on top of all five of these data points. Some of them are closer than others, basically. Um, yeah, so uh, I can't remember which one is which. Yeah, so like uh, the one that kind of sticks out here on the top is our second word here, which we said might be more familiar from um, conversation than it is from print or wherever they get their frequency numbers. But one that's really kind of right on top of the line here is, uh, let's see, it would be pork. Yeah, so about five in frequency and about four in familiarity. I think that puts us right there, right? Uh, so pork is about even <laughs> where we'd expect it to be. Uh, so for whatever that's worth, um, that's what the regression line looks like based on those uh, calculations of the uh, the math that I showed you in the previous lecture just a, a minute ago for me. I don't know how long ago it was for you when you watched it. Um, I'm going to say something else here about how to plot this in R. So I said in this model, we're going to have familiarity be the dependent variable or the Y variable. So that goes first in this command. Uh, and then frequency is our independent variable or our X variable here. Um, and so the way they're related here is with this little tilde. So that just says, uh, show me how familiarity depends on frequency. Um, so up here for the plot command, we're just saying, okay, put the frequency numbers in the X position. So typically the convention is, um, maybe I can make this bigger, um, you know, X, uh, Y is how you describe a point or, uh, yeah whatever, I guess, describe a point in a scatter plot. So frequency is the X variable here, and then familiarity is the Y variable here. And there's no assumption of any sort of relationship here in the plot command. You just say plot the data as you have it. But for this command, I am assuming a relationship. Um, and this basically says, how does familiarity depend on frequency? So that defines the dependent and independent variables. And then this LM here, is the linear model. Uh, that's what it stands for. So it's assuming a linear relationship between these two. And that's how I get um, the assumption or actually the execution of the best fit line. Uh, the AB line just plots this in a linear format, right? Um, so it's plotting the line. Uh, yeah, so I kind of described that here in these notes as well. Um, another thing we can do with this is use this LM command um, to tell us what it thinks the Y values will, will be or give us the predicted Y values for familiarity based on what we know about frequency and this model that gets generated by the LM command. So again, I'm gonna create a linear model where familiarity depends on frequency. 
And this predict part, which I'm changing from the AB line up here, the predict will just say, tell me what the predicted values for Y are, what the Y hat values are. I'm gonna spit that all into a vector called fitted. Uh, and then if I just type fitted, I'll see what the predictions are here. So for the word dough, uh, it predicted a Y value of 2.896. Um, so it's, that's again starting from this frequency value. It's trying to predict what its familiarity value should be um, So we can look at the plot again um, For dough we're way down here uh, In this bottom left hand corner its frequency is about 3.9 and its familiarity is about 2.4 But what it predicted is what we see on this line so the line tells us what the predictions are for this model. And the predictions are that the Y value should be considerably higher here than it actually is. So that's the amount of error we get there, basically, in making that prediction. And I can make that um, actually explicit, which is kind of fun. So I'll show you how to do this. I picked this up somewhere along the way, uh, this command. Um, I'll uh, show you what it does first, and then I'll try to walk you through how to do it. Um, so if I just type all this in, uh, what, what I see here is not only my best fit regression line and my observed data points, but I've got little lines being drawn in between the observations and the predictions for that data point here. So these vertical lines basically tell me how much error there is for any individual data point. Uh, and like I said, there's a fair amount of error here for dough. Uh, this is the pork data point, I think. It's really close. There's hardly anything, any kind of uh, deviation there in both dimensions. Um, stress is way up here. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of deviation there, but that's the amount of error we're getting between the predicted and observed values for familiarity. Um, yeah, and so the way I think this works uh, is that um, this part is the X variable for where the line begins. So it's saying start at the observed values for frequency and familiarity and then draw the line to another point that has the same X value for frequency and then the predicted value for the Y, the fitted values for Y. So that's how you kind of draw those lines in case you were curious about how this uh, syntax works. And that's all combined in um, a command called lines here. And that just gives you these vertical lines, which I think are helpful for comprehension's sake. Um, yeah, so that's kind of for fun, but that's what's going on here. Again, the line is the predictions. And the predictions are always going to be in the form of a line. We're just assuming that model uh, of the relationship between these two um, variables. And then uh, the data points themselves are these little circles on the graph here. If I want to find out what the actual equation for that regression line is, the base, most basic way to do that is to just use the LM command by itself. Before, we were plotting a line based on what the linear model tells us. And here, we're looking at the, what the predicted values were. If I get rid of that stuff and just say, give me a linear model of familiarity as it depends on frequency over here, then it will tell me what the slope and the intercept of that line are. Uh, so it unfortunately kind of does it in backwards order. Um, that's the way R normally works is that it will tell you the intercept of linear models first. So the intercept here is negative 1.3. And again, what that means is that if frequency were zero, familiarity would be negative 1.3. And we don't kind of expand this line out. I guess maybe we could try. Um, this is a bad idea just improvising when I'm making one of these videos, but hey, why not? Uh, what's the worst that could happen? Um, so let's go back to plot and um, I think what we need to do is go x lim equals c zero to seven. Let's try that. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so the reason it didn't do that is because um, we wound up with uh, most of the data over here on the right-hand side of the uh, plot, which is, it's graphically better to get it more evenly spread out throughout the whole thing. But be that as it may, uh, let's try, let's try this. We'll go y lim c, of negative three to what's the high end here? Six, maybe something like that. So now we've got the whole thing even more up here in the right-hand corner, but we'll see what happens to our best fit line when we plot that. So we won't change anything about that. We'll just superimpose that and look, it extends. Uh, so when um, 
x or frequency equals zero, my intercept should be, oops, I lost that, should be negative 1.3. And it's kind of hard to see there, but this is supposed to be negative 1.3 right about there. Uh, but this also enables me to kind of get a sense of how to extrapolate from the data I've got. So like if I want to make a prediction about what can I expect the familiarity value to be for um, a data point that has a frequency of two, then I know it's down here, it's just above zero, something like that. So you can kind of go beyond the known experience in this fashion uh, with a linear regression model. Um, yeah, so the other part of that that I was kind of glomming over is that the slope is over here. Uh, so the slope of this model is 1.082. Um, and we can go back to this. So these are these numbers. Uh, I'll walk you through this on a different video, but that's how slope got calculated there. And this is how the intercept got calculated. But that's where those numbers are coming from. And that's what they look like when you plot them uh, on a data, on a plot, scatter plot like this uh, in R. Uh, but again, it goes backwards. So it's intercept and then slope. That's what those mean. Um, let me walk through you, you through the rest of these. So uh, for the last bit, I want to show you uh, if we go beyond just those first five data points, uh, what will our plot look like? And this takes about as much time as it takes to plot five data points. But here we're plotting like, I can't remember, 4,600, 500 something data points. And they're all there uh, on the same graph. Uh, and you can tell there is a relationship here that looks like it's a positively correlated relationship. So bigger in terms of frequency, it looks like bigger in terms of familiarity and the opposite of that is true as well. But there's a lot of messiness in the middle. Um, yeah, and we can plot a best fit line on top of that too. It's relatively easy like this. And that's, I hope where you would have guessed the uh, best fit line should go kind of right through the middle of that mess. When I look at it, it kind of looks like uh, like a star cluster or like the center of the, the galaxy or something like that, uh, where things are mostly clustered around the middle, but then they're, they're spread on top of that. So you kind of have to angle your head a bit, I guess, to see that on the right plane. But anyways, it's kind of like that. Uh, so you can think, oh, maybe this is the center of our galaxy. There's the, the massive black hole. Uh, but it's not a massive black hole. It's just a best fit line. Um, yeah, so I have this little question in here. Would anyone care to guess what the value of R is for this correlation? We were playing the guess the correlation game earlier. Any guesses? Put them out there in your head as I take a drink. Um, and we can find it out really easily just by typing in this command in R. The, um, the core command gives you the value of R between frequency and familiarity. And it is about 0.79. So hopefully your guess was around that. Uh, hopefully within 0.1 of that, because uh, that means you can keep playing the game. If you want to see what the um, parameters are for the linear uh, relationship between these two variables, you can do that. And again, this is looking at familiarity as the Y value as it depends on frequency. Um, and the intercept winds up being pretty similar here. We should probably actually be able to see that. Yeah, we can see that on the graph nicely this time because uh, these X values go down to zero. Uh, but when X is zero, Y is about 1.3. Uh, and then as X moves in this direction, for each unit it goes up, Y goes up by about 0.5. So we start from 1.3. At one, we get uh, 1.8 or so. At two, we should be at about 2.3. And lo and behold, that's where our best fit line is, right about there. So on and so forth, all the way up, that's the slope of the equation. And remember, the slope is not gonna fit all these data points perfectly, but given the data points we have, this is the one that gets the closest to them all, or has the least amount of spread between the line and all the various data points combined. Uh, yeah, so that's the best fit line. Uh, we can also look at it with a much less clear relationship, the one we talked about before, uh, between um, the number of letters in a word and the familiarity that listeners or the participants have with these words. Um, so in general, you might expect people to be a little bit more familiar with shorter words because shorter word, more common words tend to be a little shorter. Uh, really big words people tend to be less familiar with, but um, it doesn't matter that much. And we can find out exactly how much it matters. First of all, we can plot the best fit line for this bit data. And this is gonna look weird, right? Because the uh, letters numbers are so chunky, they're more granular or more granularly defined going from two to three to four, so on and so forth. So there's no in between for those. But what we see here, interestingly enough, is a slightly negative relationship 
Again, like I said, for longer words, you might expect people to be a little less familiar with them. And for shorter words, you might expect people to be a little more familiar with them. So that the numbers for familiarity go up as we're over to the left-hand side of this graph. And they go down as you, the number of letters in the words get bigger. Um, yeah, and then the last two bits here, we can look at uh, what the correlation coefficient is here. Anybody want to guess what the correlation co coefficient should be here? I guess I can give you a break again if you want to put something out there. Um, but it's harder to see than it was in the game or in the previous example because letters are just narrowly defined. Um, but if you hit return there, you get a value of negative 0.08. Uh, and the negative, again, means that the line is going to be sloping downwards to the right. Um, just because uh, as letters get bigger, familiarity gets smaller. And we can see that in the slope of this linear equation as well. Right here, we have a negative slope of negative 0.11. Uh, going back to this R value though, uh, it's not only negative, which we haven't seen before, but it's a relatively, it's a pretty small value of R. So it's pretty close to zero. It's negative 0.8 which means there's not that strong of a relationship between these two variables. You can't predict familiarity, familiarity that well based on just knowing the letters, the number of letters in a word. Um, yeah, the intercept is 4.28. So that's when, if you had a word with zero letters in it, if that's possible, uh, people would be pretty familiar with, familiar with it according to this model. So that is maybe a good reminder that uh, you can't extrapolate too much from uh, these models and it's also a good reminder that um these models make the most sense or maybe only make sense really if there aren't limits like that on the values of your variables uh so if they're not constrained between like zero percent and 100 percent, you can apply a uh, linear regression model to them but when they run up against those limits the model will stop making sense basically um yeah so i think I might stop there, but I will mention as well, um, you know, this is close to zero and zero is there means that there's no predictive relationship between these two variables. Uh, so there is a way to run a null hypothesis significance test to see if the value of R for a relationship is significantly different from zero, i.e. can you make some meaningful predictions based on your X value about what the value of Y will be? Uh, there is a way to do that. I have uh, some math I can walk you through to understand that a little bit better as well. Um, but that is a little bit uh, complicated, so I'm not going to do it right now. And it's also interesting because the more data points you have, the more likely you're, you are to get a significant result anyways. So in a database like this where we have like over 4,000 data points, um, you can run that test if you want, but it'll probably give you a significant result even if there's a very small effect size. Uh, we'll see that again uh, next time or maybe the time thereafter, but for now I'm done uh, and I'll come back again tomorrow with more linear regression concepts for you to uh, to wrap your head around. So I'll see you then.